It's a pleasure to welcome all of you to the San Francisco Open Mic Poetry Podcast, TV show, Clarion Music, Performing Arts Center. And we're very pleased to welcome our star-studded poet guest today, whose name is Ken Safran. Greetings to you, Ken. Welcome. Well, thanks, Stephen. It's, it's a pleasure to be here at a uh, special edition. I was really happy you asked me because it's a fun program. Yes, it is, I think. We've been doing this for about six and a half years, and of course I want to thank um, John Rhodes, that's our ABLE director, and assisted by Clara Sue, our assistant director. And it's always been a delight over the years to welcome poets from different backgrounds, different ages, different parts of Central California to this particular site, and especially in your case, because uh, fellow poets here in San Francisco if they think of Ken Safran at all, which hopefully they do, they think of Ken Safran as a well-published poet, and deservedly so. Uh, I'd like to suggest that, that we start at this time. We have a, a lot to accomplish. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to start with a poem called Rowing. Steady rhythmic pulls push a boat over the lagoon. Orlocks clank and groan. He sees what's been left behind, tired ends of night's untended shadows, and, without looking, what he rows toward. Day breaks into crowded detail. With each stroke, water drips from oars, shiny as new pennies. The next one is called Lines of Flux. Late summer, pale grass, and a few weeds flowering. Scary how empty the wind feels, wrapped around her, isolating her in thought. Those eyes never tell. Filling the sky with clouds that glow in the sun like her dress. Watching in safety from the trees, a boy who adores her. She doesn't know. He might as well be among the clouds in the wind slowly changing their lives. Later, on a coal blue and asphalt black motorcycle, a different wind will tear his eyes. The zest of lemon swirls around his drink. Another way he tries to kickstart his life. And then he sees her again. It's for real, this time he's sure. He's consumed by her lips, corona of hair. The rest of the room goes gray. She hasn't noticed him. So he says, hello. <clears throat> this is called Arguing the World. A black angel slips out of his wings. Evening has gotten too cold for the gray World Gym t-shirt. He puts on the black leather jacket tied around his waist and straps his wings back on. His friend, the bearded nun, waits, a to-go cup in each hand. Then they head back out to Polk Street, where they are barely noticed. A transvestite by the window argues with an imaginary lover in sign language he continually invents to hold on while his mascara is running. It will all make sense if the Virgin Mary appears in the bottom of his coffee cup. But isn't that her in torn fishnet stockings on a nod Coffee will not disturb. In the corner, a skinny, hollow-eyed boy hides behind wire-rimmed glasses, whispering into a notebook. He rests in Billy Holiday's tracks. Uh, this is called Ben Raining Here. Cold at night, I pull the past around me. Last summer, on hot nights without covers, 
we moved together through a tangle of legs and arms trying to hold on. Last week, when we met again, there was something almost, something not there between us that held us down and held us up. On my way home, two strong electric pulses pushing, pushing windshield wipers through a steady rain, the traffic light changes. I have a question that perhaps our universal audience has a question as well, so I'll ask on their behalf, which is, as a writer and as a poet, what inspires thee? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I'm quite a visual poet, actually, and so it's, a lot of times it's, it's something I'll see or, or it could either be, you know, just a quick almost snapshot or, or some sequence of events and either the urban landscape, which I frequent here, or a lot of times just out in nature, and and I wonder why why do, why am I reacting to this? You know, why am I having uh, an emotional reaction or an intellectual reaction? And I'll try and try and figure that out. And that and so that's what most of the poetry comes from, I think. Thank you for that response, mm -hmm. which reminds me. Uh, um, I think it's appropriate for me to present this particular work at this particular time. You recall this, I'm sure, with great delight. This is uh, both a literary and art anthology created by uh, Oakland-based artist and poet uh, Elizabeth Hackett, or Elizabeth Hack, excuse me. And uh, it includes a particular piece by our guest today. And just to perhaps enunciate more clearly uh, with this, the visual um, profundity of this particular work. Would you read to us, good sir, Blackbird? Thank you, Stephen. Sure. Um, so I don't know if Stephen said, but the name of it is San Francisco Peace and Hope. And it's just a wonderful anthology of, um, of uh, art and poetry. And, uh, and so the piece I have in here is called Hello, Blackbird. Mist has had its morning stretch and curled up under leaves. Ferns, piano key, the wood's edge. All I hear is wind until I'm close. Tiny flowers there with petals of sun and scary blood-red hearts. Call them wildflowers or weeds. It doesn't matter to the birds or spiders wading in webs. Who would think this a part of sky? Tangled leaves catch, untie my shoes. Thank you, Stephen. Thank that you. was fun. Good. <laughs> Please continue with your excellent work at this time. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, and actually, that was fun. I don't... I, Many of the poems I'm reading here are, you know, more melancholic, say, or, you know, uh, and so I'm glad to read something upbeat. And, and so this is called Point of View. Monarch butterflies only migrate one way, yet their offspring find the way back, which to them is forward. They say the world is tilted so. Butterflies leave and leaves change. How do we know the world is turning? Horizon fades in the early dusk. I choose not to be afraid of the dark, but if I want love to last, And this is called After Midsummer's Night. It wasn't actually written in California because it includes the Northern Lights, which I don't think we can ever see here. But um, anyway, it's called After Midsummer's Night. Wine grapes on the table. Thanks to Jane, I know better than to eat, than to eat them. 
One of the grapefruits was not so lucky. Scattered peels like an exploded nebula. Small comets of seeds around the rim of the clear glass plate. Silver and gold starbursts on the beige formica dinette you grew up with, which your parents gave you after college. It looks almost new, though the matching chairs are gone. Did your parents think they were modern when they bought it? And what about now? It is night, but a bagel and a grapefruit and strong coffee is what I want. An encroaching, <clears throat> an encroaching town lurks outside the window. I imagine a person looking out from behind each light. What can I tell them? Nothing on the table is local, and neither am I. Better to sit in the dark. Above us, the northern lights, a silent score that plays itself out. Who is the composer, and where are the musicians? Curtains draw back and forth across the sky. I don't know why or how. Something, something, electromagnetic particles. How can I keep getting older and know so little? I put my head down on the table for just a moment. When I look up again, the sun has risen. Okay, two more. My advice, sail away. Tomorrow is a fence along the cliff. When fog thins, the path is not so steep, nor the beach so far. But just as in the hills, danger swims with the current. You have to watch out. Then sail away. Nowhere in particular is some place to go, and no reason to stay, or a reason not. A sail full of nothing you can see. And then for my last poem, uh, it's a very short poem with a very large title. It's called Faith. Angels dance exquisitely in the fire, a hand reaches out for your hand. Thank you. And your host, Stephen Coppell, wants to say thank you so much to brilliant, uh, modernist, surrealist, magical poet. That would be Ken Safran, <laughs> the gentleman seated here. And we want to say so much uh, to praise thee and hoping that uh, you continue to uh, present these remarkable pieces here in San Francisco or elsewhere, settings where poets and just general audiences can enjoy and react with uh, a sense of delightful mystery as they listen to your beautiful phrases. And so I want to say it's a pleasure to have you on special edition. We're part of that larger theatrical and educational entity, San Francisco Open Mic Poetry Podcast TV Show. Thank you for joining us. I'll say so long to Mr. Ken Safran. Thank you, Stephen.